Okay, so this is the um, KX165 that I bought on eBay for a pretty decent price. And as you can see, the unit cosmetically looks brand new. There's no scratches on the faceplate or the lenses and the the frame itself is absolutely flawless. Uh, I did plug it into the rack and it transmits just fine and it receives just fine. The only issue is that uh, on the nav side when um, you pull the radial knob out it's supposed to uh, show the radio to the VOR uh, that you're on uh, or from the VOR I should say not to but from the VOR um, and when you push it back in it's supposed to show the uh, standby frequency well it when you when you push the knob in it uh, uh, it, it still shows the uh, the bearing or or the radio from from the VOR so um, if you pull the 25 kilohertz you'll be able to hear a distinct click like that whereas if you pull on this knob it feels kinda mushy and it, it only clicks when you push it back in when you not when you pull it back out Anyways, the, the final outcome is that, that it's always displaying the, um, the radio from, from the VR station. And, and when you push it in, it doesn't display the, uh, the um, standby frequency. So we're going to take this, this unit apart and see what's going on. I suspect uh, that that switch, there's something wrong with that switch. So. Let me uh, set up the tripod and uh, we're going to take the top off and see what we can see inside. Okay, we're about uh, ready to open up the radio and just a couple things before we get started. The first thing is I got a little container here to put all the screws so I don't don't lose them. The second one, there's a sticker here that says caution, content subject to damage by static electricity. Do not open except at approved static free workstation. So this is just like any other piece of uh, electronic uh, equipment. Um, you should be very careful uh, not to damage it by um, accidentally, you know, discharging yourself on, on the equipment. So make sure you discharge yourself uh, before um, you you attempt to do this. So uh, on the top of the rear there's uh, one, two, three, four uh, little etchings here that says open. So we're going to take these uh, little screws out and should be able to open that up. These are Phillips screws. Okay, the four screws are out and it's hinged over here on this side so we know that we have to lift it up on this side here. There it is. Okay, as you can see there's uh, quite a few ICs in there. Um, the bit that we're interested in is back over here. And uh, let me take the camera off so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so um, the knob in question is, is right here. And it lines up with this switcher. It's got three terminals on it. Two of them have wires and one of them does not. Um, it looks like the the actuator is actually on the other side of the board so uh, there's no access um, 
to the actuator from this side so it looks like we're going to have to take the bottom out uh, to, to see what's going on so let me put the camera back on the tripod and uh, let's take that bottom off okay so here is the bottom of the unit and unlike the top it doesn't tell you which screws to remove um, so it looks like there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve screws that I need to take out there's no hinge on this side so this cover just comes right out um, so let me do that so I don't waste your time and um, I'll show you how that cover comes off. Okay, so I have removed the 12 screws um, and now this cover comes off just like that. Okay, and now we can actually see um, the actuators for the switches. Uh, let me get a flashlight so we can shine a little bit more light in there and see what's going on. So here is the switch in question and I think I see what's going on. Let me verify with this guy here. Yes. So with the 25 a kilohertz switch um, I can see the actuator of that switch moving left and right and on this guy here the the plastic it looks like it's a plastic actuator uh, for the switch and it's actually broken um, so that's why it feels kind of mushy because it's actually uh, the metal is actually riding on top of this a broken piece of uh, plastic in here so it's not actually moving the switch at all um, so that's that's what's happening so um, it looks like it's just a single pull double throw switch um, but naturally being avionics it has to be expensive um, so I'm gonna go put the camera down I'm gonna actually I'm gonna see if I can show with the microscope with with uh, what's going on here but I I'm gonna open up the service manual and see if I can get a part number for this switch okay so here we are it's very difficult to see but uh, this is a close-up with the USB microscope of the 25 kilohertz and you can see that V-shaped um, that's the plastic uh, actuator that sits between two metal sh uh, plates and when you pull the 25 kilohertz um, knob that switch moves left and right so it's situated right between the two metal plates as you can see there now I'm going to show you what the other one looks like this is the one that's in trouble you can see that same metal except down there is vacant and that's because that switch and you can kind of see it's kind of broken to the left over there so that's our problem that switch has been uh, I guess somebody pulled on that knob too hard and it broke the, the plastic actuator so there, there's the bad one okay and the good one should look like that where the actuator that v-shaped uh, plastic piece is uh, right between the two metal uh, like they like metal washers all right so let's go to the um, to the service manual and get a part number for that switch alright so we're gonna open up the uh, 
155 slash 165 uh, maintenance manual and as you can tell from right here it's uh, only 611 pages long so it takes a bit of time and effort to locate that switch um, in, in the beginning they have a list of uh, illustrations and uh, an index and the way I found it was going through the uh, theory of operation and uh, let me just summarize it by going directly to the relevant pages so if we go to page 108 uh, it talks about the uh, increment and decrement switches right here and it, it, in this paragraph it says increment and decrement switches 104 or 105 are parallel connected to the nav transfer switch S41 the radio uh, switch which is S402 and the comp transfer and then there's another 2550 kilohertz switch here so this is the switch that we're interested in it's a radio S402 so now that we have that we can go into the illustrated parts breakdown page which is on page uh, 254 and if we zoom in we're going to see here is here is the knob here's the radio uh, standby uh, knob right here and it lines up with with this uh, switch right here which is uh, S402 so this is the bit that we're interested in um, so now we can verify uh, with the schematics uh, which is on page 493 to identify what kind of switch it is and if we scroll over here here is the microprocessor in the center and here are the four switches and one of them is S402 and it's a the bearing is the is the legend on it so that's our switch right there and it's a simple uh, single pole double throw switch so we can finally go to the parts uh, list which is on page um, 249 and, and here it is S402 and this is the um, the Bendix King slash Honeywell part number uh, I'm sure that there is a uh, a generic uh, part number for that switch um, anyways I, I did look for this switch on on the internet and it is listed on a number of different uh, uh, web pages and I called the first place and they wanted $28 I think for the switch but they had a minimum order of $50 so I called the second place and they had a switch uh, for $8.40 so I got that switch so um, I ordered it I'm waiting for it to come in and then uh, I'm gonna go and uh, and, and, and change it out and it is, the, great, the radio should be as good as new. Okay, so in anticipation of the um, switch arriving any minute now, I've uh, desoldered the two red wires. Uh, you can see them right there. And there's another one there from the switch itself. And now I'm about ready to take out that switch and it's held in place by two Phillips uh, screws with uh, a couple of nuts on the other side of the board. So let me take that switch out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's the, uh, the broken switch. As you can see, the actuator, this plastic piece is broken from the switch. And by the way, the switch is made by CNW. Uh, you can probably buy that part on uh, DigiKey. Anyways, the, um, here's the screw. There's a screw, a lock washer, and a flat washer that goes through this uh, hole right here, and then you put the nut on the other side, likewise for this guy. But in order to take out the switch, you have to take out the knob, okay? And at the end of this knob right here, uh, around this little uh, metal piece that goes around the actuator, there's a little C-clip that attaches uh, to the end here and that's how you take that knob out. 
Okay, the switch still hasn't come in, but as soon as it does, we're going to put it back together and I'll show you what the new switch looks like. Alright, uh, I just got the switch, as you can see over here, so I got uh, the broken one on the left and the new one on the right. It looks like the actuator is actually a little bit shorter than the uh, original one. But anyways, I, I went online and based on the measurements, I went to DigiKey and um, I found, there's the CW brand, and it looks like the part number is a GS-115-0041 and DigiKey sells them for a dollar seventy-two uh, one-piece quantity. So it probably costs more to ship the switch than what the switch is, uh, is worth. But anyways, there it is. So I'm going to put it back in, uh, solder the wires, and I'll show you uh, the end product. Okay, so the new switch is uh, back in. Uh, the other side I already soldered the two wires. And um, these are some of the tools that I, I needed to use. It's a very tight, constricted uh, space in there. So you're going to have to have uh, some patience and just play with the, with the nuts and lining everything up. And uh, otherwise, it, it fits in uh, pretty nicely. Okay, so we're going to put um, the covers back on and then we're going to take it to the airplane and test it out. So right now, it feels pretty good. You can hear a distinct click, and it's no longer uh, mushy. So um, that was the whole the whole problem that that broken switch uh, right there. Okay, so here is the uh, KX165 with that switch. Uh, has been replaced and now we can see right here that the standby frequency is uh, is being shown so before it was always like this uh, the radio display was out uh, but now it uh, it works as uh, as advertised so that was uh, that was it there was just a broken uh, switch